Hello, I'm Vince Vopat, Product Manager for Bergkamp Incorporated. I'm going to talk to you today about three pieces of laboratory equipment that are critical to microsurfacing and slurry mix design. As you may know, since the 1960s, Benedict Slurry Seal has provided laboratory test equipment for slurry surfacing design. In fact, Ben Benedict invented this equipment to bring slurry surfacing into the mainstream and helped establish it as a premium pavement preservation technique. This equipment and the testing it performs gives the mix designer insight to how the curing and strength build of a freshly laid mix will behave as well as fully cured material will behave over a longer period of time. In early 2020, Bergkamp Incorporated acquired the Benedict Slurry Seal business and has been operating the business and intends to continue the sale and support of the Benedict line of equipment for the foreseeable future. The first piece of equipment I want to show you is the wet track abrasion tester. The objective of the test is simple. Does the asphalt form a strong adhesive bond to the aggregate? This information is important because poor adhesion leads to failure modes such as raveling and disintegration. And as the test states, this test is performed wet, so it also tests susceptibility to moisture interference to the adhesive bonding of the asphalt to the aggregate. The testing method is fully explained in ISSA Technical Bulletin 100. For all the test method details, please refer to that document at slurry.org. Let's first look at the sample making for this test. A lab mix is made of proportions of aggregate, water, emulsion, and any other additives that are necessary. The mix is placed on the prescribed asphalt felt paper inside the sample template. The mix is then struck off with careful attention to making a smooth, well-filled surface. The sample is then fully cured and weighed. The sample is then conditioned by soaking the sample in water for a specified time, either one hour or six days. After the conditioning, the sample is then placed in the sample pan and is covered in water. The sample is then locked in place and the head is lowered. The head is constructed of a specified weight with a specified hose that contacts the sample. The specified weight is to control the downforce on the sample. The rubber hose is used due to its similarity to a vehicle tire. Now we're ready to start the test. The head abrades the sample with its planetary motion for a defined period of time. Once the abrasion period is complete, the sample is washed to remove loose material. As you can see, material abrades off the sample from the friction of the rubber hose. The sample will be dried to a constant weight. The final sample weight will be compared to the original pre-test weight. A sample that loses little material is a higher performing mix than one that loses more material because it has demonstrated that it has more asphalt adhesive strength. The next piece of equipment is crucial to microsurfacing and slurry mix design because it gives insight into how the mix will cure and set, which will allow a prediction of return to traffic time. This is accomplished by testing the resistance of the mix to torque from this rubber foot. This is similar to a turning tire. This test method is defined in ISSA Technical Bulletin 139. Samples are made in a similar fashion to the wet track samples but with smaller templates and allowed to cure, usually for 30 and 60 minutes. The tester has an air pressurized cylinder that puts a controlled amount of downforce on the sample. The technician then exerts the torque by using a torque wrench in a controlled twisting motion on the shaft of the tester. The torque reading is then recorded along with an assessment of the tested sample. The test results are an indication of how quickly a road mix is predicted to set, cure, and build strength, and therefore should give a reasonable prediction of return to traffic times after the mix has been laid. Finally, we have the loaded wheel tester. This device is used in the test method described in ISSA Technical Bulletin 109. This device is built with a 
reciprocating wheel and it comes into contact with the sample of road mix, a fully cured sample of road mix. So this device simulates vehicle tires in contact with the road mix. What the test is being used for is to discover the maximum amount of asphalt binder that can be used in the mix without flushing or bleeding. In the other two tests we described, the cohesion test and the wet track, one can usually achieve better results with higher asphalt contents in the mix. However, too much asphalt will lead to flushing of the mix. That is where traffic will compact the mix and excess asphalt will bleed to the top, leading to a sticky mess for the road surface. In addition, the deformation of the sample will further indicate how the mix will perform under traffic load. Again, mix is prepared similar to the previous tests with a different size template and allowed to fully cure. The sample is then loaded and placed under the wheel. The specified weight is placed here. Some use bags of sand, some use lead to make the proper amount of downforce on the wheel and sample. The motor is then turned on and the wheel passes begin. There is a counter that indicates the number of passes of the wheel. Once the required number of passes are complete, the sample can then be measured for deformation. The extent of the deformity gives insight to how the rutting could occur with the mix. Once the deformation is measured, a specified amount of sand can be placed on the sample with the help of a template which holds the sand on the sample. A steel bar is then placed on the top of the sand and, and more passes of the loaded wheel are performed. The amount of sand that remains adhered to the sample gives insight into the likelihood of bleeding and flushing of the mix. There are other tests and testing equipment involved in mix design, but the three we've covered here today are the most common because they give us insight into the early performance as well as the longer term performance of a mix. I would like to thank Rich Wenthe and Debbie Deep of Ingevity that were great help in the making of this video. Thank you for your time today.